Over the past several years, we've featured pretty much every model there is available for the BMW X3. And for 2022, it has gotten a life cycle impulse, LCI for short, or in normal speak, it's a facelift. This vehicle is a 2022 BMW X3 M40i, the M performance version of BMW's compact luxury SUV. So what does the LCI bring? Well, we've got an updated exterior design with new kidney grills, headlights, front and rear bumpers, as well as the exhaust trim and rear taillights. Looks very nice. Also out back, the taillights now have a horizontal turn signal, which I think is kind of cool. There's also the new Brooklyn gray metallic paint, which this vehicle is finished in. That gray is definitely the new black. This is a very nice looking color and somehow tops the Donington gray, which we liked on the previous X3M competition that we featured. So it depends on what you're looking for, but very nice color for this vehicle. On the inside, things have been updated as well. BMW says they've taken the interior design from the 4 Series and brought it over to this, making it a little bit more in line with the other X vehicles like the X5 or X7. We have the larger 10.25 inch iDrive 7 screen with the 12.3 inch digital cockpit and some of the button placements have been changed around in the vehicle to make things a little bit more user friendly. But if you're familiar with the X3, it will be familiar to you because for the most part, it hasn't changed too much. Now, the major change, if you want to call it that, is the engine with the M40i setup. It's the same 3-liter turbocharged straight 6, but they've added a mild hybrid system. It now produces 382 horsepower up 27, still has 369 pound-feet of torque, and still uses the 8-speed transmission. We have a number of options on this vehicle, including the M Sport brakes in red. I think they look pretty nice. We've also got the roof racks on here. Keep in mind the MSRP for this does not include these as the accessories were not listed on the build sheet that I have. But for the most part, this is a very well equipped vehicle. A couple of things we are missing that I would have liked to have seen on this specific VIN would have been home link and rear heated seats. Those are options, but they just weren't selected on this vehicle. So price will go up a little bit more if you're looking to get those features. But for the most part, BMW has taken an already very popular design, a very popular vehicle, and improved it a little bit to make it a little bit more appealing for those who want a smaller crossover like this, don't want to go up to something as big as the X5, but still want to have the look and design that is carried over from the larger X models from BMW. Now we're going to take this 2022 BMW X3 M40i on the road. We're going to talk about how it performs and compares to some of the other vehicles we've done. See if it really is an improvement over something like the X4 M40i that we drove a few years ago. And anything else that you need to know if you're in the market for the G01 BMW X3. All right, my friends, before we get on our road test, let's talk about the fuel economy. We completed our 100 kilometer test loop in this BMW X3 M40i in 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is not too bad considering it's very difficult to keep this vehicle in eco pro mode because you want to rip it. So I was able to do almost my entire test loop in eco pro mode. Kind of had to put it into Sport Plus though. So keep that in mind, again, you know, the type of people who are gonna be buying a car like this probably don't care about fuel economy as much, but it's still important. You know, one of the things about these and performance vehicles, the entry level AMGs and things like that is, if you wanna get sort of the nicer look and all of the features, you have to end up going up to one of these trims. So maybe you don't necessarily need or want the performance. It's still important to know about the fuel economy, but let's talk about the BMW X3 M40i. First of all, I think it looks great. BMW has done a great job updating this. Looks very similar to the X5 if you were to park them side by side. Yeah, pretty similar now. You know, this is a big vehicle. So if you compare it to like one of the first X5s ever made, this is probably the same size now. But yeah, it looks a little bit more like the current generation of vehicles from BMW. You know, the headlights have changed. We don't really have the full Corona rings anymore. It's like the 3 Series where they're sort of L-shaped. You know, I don't have the laser lights on this, which is fine. I never find a difference using them, so it's better to have uh, just the regular LED lights on here, but there's a lot of standard tech that's become available here. You know, it's full LED lighting throughout now is standard. A lot of the other features are now standard on this. Ours is very well equipped. We have things like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and all that stuff was added on with the different packages. So there's a lot of choice. I don't have a wireless phone charger, and for me at least, I guess it doesn't really matter because because almost all of them are too small for my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Whereas 
at least if you have a smaller phone you could have used it so there isn't one on here I didn't see it as an option either home link was that's a standalone feature but I didn't see the wireless charger bit of a bummer there but like I said outside you can add some more stuff to this you know, ventilated seats heated rear seats things like that but for the most part this is pretty well equipped maybe not necessarily for the Canadian market but if you're in the States and it doesn't get too cold there then front heated seats is fine it's all you really need but for the most part I have been enjoying the drive so far with the BMW X3 M40i performance is very very good I like driving it it's got a good sound to it. it's got a good feel it is firm and we always say that if you're looking for a smoother ride do not go for one of the M performance vehicles because this uses the BMW M suspension system the M tuned so you're gonna have a little harsher ride and if you live somewhere like I do here in Quebec the roads are not that great you're gonna feel it a whole lot more than you would on smoother roads but again you're buying a BMW because that's what you want you want the drive and performance and the thrill that comes with owning a car like this and you absolutely get it it is sort of hard to improve on a very good vehicle and BMW has done that uh, sometimes I almost feel that manufacturers purposely come out with a design that isn't quite perfect so that they can come out with that just slightly better version down the road but anyway let's give this a try oh buddy yeah listen to that go easy easy sport plus mode sport for the transmission you've got flappy paddles if you want to use it good stuff here and that's what I have said in the past before when you're looking at a vehicle like this personally I feel that the M performance one is the sweet spot yeah it's super fun buying the X3 M competition I had a blast driving that it worked phenomenally well in a snowstorm when I was coming back really the last auto show I probably will have ever been to in my life I drove back with that car and I loved it as a daily driver especially with gas premium here is like two dollars and ten cents something like that now it's not fun yeah you still should use premium with this but you don't have to use as much performance right this is really the sweet spot you've got the sound the performance the fun that comes with it without having to go completely bonkers with the full-on M car do a little launch here for you oh yes let's go Hunter. easy 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 in this car Oh, it's hard not to enjoy it. Yeah, I do like driving these cars. I do like the performance and the fact that, you know, okay, $85,000, $86,000 Canadian. It's not like it's super affordable to everybody. But if you're in the market for this, if you've got that kind of budget, it is entry-level performance that you can use pretty much on a daily basis. You don't have to worry too much about going through sets of tires every month or so. So that's what I do like about these vehicles. Plus you've got the space. You know, the one thing that I do think though, and I'm gonna upset some people when I say this, I have this vehicle the week after I had the Acura MDX Type S. And they are about the same price, you know. Certainly this is configured a little bit more. We've got the roof rack on top and things like that. And you know, do you really need the $500 M brakes on here? I mean, the brakes I think are the same, they're just red. Do you need all of it? No. So if I were in the market for this, would I buy the slightly larger Acura MDX? It's a mid-size vehicle. Yeah, it's got less power, but the space is there, the comforts are, there's more features. Or do I get the BMW? Really hard to say because I, I thoroughly enjoyed the MDX, but there is something about driving a BMW. It's a toughie. I honestly think if I had the money and I were gonna buy it, I would probably go with the Acura because long term, the Acura will probably hold up better. And you see tons of older MDXs on the road, reliability on them, usually pretty solid. Yeah, it's using Acura's first air suspension, so who knows about that? But when it comes to the BMW, yeah, it's gonna work really well. But once it's out of warranty and you're pushing it hard, I don't know. Long term with any of the luxury cars, not great. So you gotta take a chance with either one of them, but at least in my situation, the Acura nudges ahead a little bit, but it's a very close one. I know they're not comparable at all, but just since I drove it last, I'm letting you know. But I'll leave you with this last piece of thought here. It's a great car, don't get me wrong, 
but I think that the Germans will have to start adjusting how they sell these vehicles because you know when you have to add options like home link, heated rear seats, ventilated seats, all of the small details that you know you would kind of like to have but you have to pay for it with every single piece and then you look at something like Genesis that just gives you the fully loaded vehicle for the same price or Acura which gives you the fully loaded MDX Type S for you know, one price yeah I think we're gonna see some strong competition that's gonna make the Germans have to reevaluate things they will continue to sell they will absolutely it's not gonna eat into their profits hugely but there is more competition now in the luxury space and things are gonna start to get really competitive yeah, they will still always have a very core group of buyers who only touch a BMW but there's some compelling offerings on the market now to make you second guess what you might want to buy. But if you have any questions about this episode of Test Drive, please let me know in the comments below. I do try to get back to everybody that I can. Give a thumbs up to the video if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.